My name is Richard Gelderman. I'm the uh, representative from the Kentucky section and a member of a number of AEPT committees. And I'm going to call today's plenary session to order and give a brief introduction for Mark Whittle. Um, uh, there will be time for questions after Mark's presentation. Uh, the poster sessions begin after this, and Mark will be available after the session for additional discussions for anyone who wants to stay and ask things. Dr. Mark Whittle comes to us from the University of Virginia. He's a professor and researcher in the Department of Astronomy. Mark earned his bachelor's degree in physics from Oxford, um, his PhD from Cambridge. His research uses images and spectroscopy from the Hubble Space Telescope to study how jets emanate from black holes at the center of active, active galaxies, how they interact with and in some senses destroy the interstellar medium of the host galaxy. Mark started at the University of Virginia in 1986. He's a popular teacher of introductory astronomy, extragalactic astrophysics, and cosmology. And I'd like to ask you to please welcome here today for his presentation. Uh, that kind introduction, Richard, and also I'd like to thank uh, the organizers, especially um, Mary Beth and Mary, for inviting me to speak to you. Um, I'm delighted to be here. I've really enjoyed the talks I've attended so far, and I'm um, looking forward to some talks tomorrow as well that I pencil in. Um, my topic is, uh, is cosmology, and um, with an audience like this, I really don't have to uh, convince you that this subject has undergone a fabulous uh, development in the last 10 or 20 years. The story is now um, really delightfully rich. Uh, if you include inflation in the story, we actually have a creation and launching mechanism for the universe's expansion and its contents. We have a fairly detailed theory of the early hot phase. We have uh, also, a fairly detailed theory and slash observations of the emergence of structure from the early universe and its culmination in the tapestry, the web-like pattern of galaxies in today's universe. Actually, this story is so rich, but it's also so new, that it isn't really out there in the culture, and nor is it really in the minds of the students that we teach. So, um, in a way, it's, uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to, to actually try and create that transition of uh, knowledge breakthrough, really, to fill in this really wonderful, rich story of how everything came to be and how we came to be here. It's ultimately our own story, our own lineage. It's very important, I think. Um, so, uh, in fact, it causes a primary challenge in this particular topic, especially with uh, younger students or even students with very little science background, is to bring alive and make real the external universe. It is very remote, and in their minds it can be extremely alien uh, and unfathomable in certain ways. Um, and so uh, it's very important, I think, to sort of bring it down home um, and uh, I'm going to choose a particular, the story is too rich to tell a whole thing, of course. I'm going to just choose a window by the first million years. Um, so I'm not going to try and go into either inflation or the first section, nor really develop a discussion of the current uh, properties of the universe and galaxies. But this particular time um, is actually a wonderful one in the sense that it is almost experiential. We can almost feel the conditions back then. Secondly, it is also amenable to lots of simple physics. It's a very simple time in the universe. Hot, thin, blowing gas. Uh, it's a sort of standard thermodynamic type of entity uh, that uh, can be uh, discussed and analyzed both in intuitive terms and in quantitative problem-solving terms. So it's a good, it's a good uh, springboard for this audience. Uh, and then finally, uh, as we'll learn, in the first million years it was filled with semi-musical sound, which ultimately evolved into stars and galaxies. And hence it, it dovetails with one of, the, um, one of the themes of this particular meeting, um, as uh, 
as exemplified by these delightful talks this morning on the physics of musical instruments and jazz and so on in, in the New Orleans location. So I was trying to honour that, uh, that particular theme. So uh, as with any journey, this is a journey back in time, very remote, very alien place. Let's start close to home, of course, where we're familiar. And so we start here in the current universe uh, and with a just a beautiful uh, picture of um, the Milky Way with foreground uh, as a coastal sea. Um, I like this image. There are many such beautiful images available on the web these days, uh, produced in all sorts of different ways. Uh, but this, I think, nicely evokes uh, our trajectory through the galaxy in a way. You could imagine this, the seashore just disappearing and you would be at the helm of some spaceship uh, with this um, pretty brilliant uh, uh, picture of the image of the Milky Way uh, crossing the sky. Of course, if we were able to lift up uh, out of the galaxy, uh, we would look back down on it uh, to witness something like this. It's, of course, it's not our own galaxy, but it's almost fairly similar to our own. And these are you know, fundamental building blocks in our universe. And so I'll just say a couple of things about them because uh, they are uh, almost an icon of astronomy, something that uh, K through 12 kids that know about my little two year old. Uh, but I'm against bias because I'm a strong point to say my uh, Arecibo uh, nightshirts and spiral galaxy that. So, so they are aware of. Concepts as far as what are they? What are they? The, the, the first thing that's extremely difficult to get across to anybody is the enormous size of these things. And so, just a couple of obviously scale models help a great deal. Let's just imagine uh, we go roughly here and pick out one star, which might be the first sun, and let's make that the size of a human cell and might come across. And with that, the Earth's orbit is now a millimeter or so, so it's pink head. Imagine it right here in front of me. With that scale, our galaxy becomes the size of the United States. So there will be another cell 100 yards away, maybe with some more planets about the size of a saucer, and another, and another, and another. And so it would go for 100 billion stars to make the Second thing to mention this is a dynamic system. One of the questions we always ask in astronomy is is it moving? Does it move? And the answer is absolutely. Even the picture, without it actually moving, the spiral shape evokes rotation. Uh, and it is not unlike, of course, the orbit of the Earth and the planets around the Sun. It's gravitationally inspired, uh, if you like. It's orbiting under Newton's gravity. It's all to play, more or less. And then thirdly, with any system in astronomy, particularly in cosmology, you want to ask, has it always been this way? What was it like originally? How did it come to be that way? Has it always been this way? No, of course not. Okay, so that's part of the story that's currently being um, uh, unpacked with the history of galaxies. Well, of course, modern telescopes can now look out and see a plethora of galaxies. Uh, this is a slightly biased region because it is in fact a cluster of galaxies, but essentially every fuzzy image you see there is a galaxy. And as a result of the last uh, 10 years, 15 years perhaps, some huge surveys of galaxies have now mapped their locations and distributions out to about 2 billion light years. Um, I'll perhaps come back to the concept of light in a moment, but I'm going to guess most of you have that already. And so it's possible now to actually make a map of the not-so-local universe. This is such a map, it requires a moment of explanation. Uh, so the Milky Way galaxy is right at the center, and there are about 30,000 dots here. Each dot is another galaxy. And uh, there are some regions which we cannot survey because the Milky Way disk of our galaxy gets in the way, but otherwise we have pretty good access above and below the plane of the Milky Way, and this represents a slice that's just 10 degrees thick. That's about as, as thick as my fist held at arm's length, so it's a swath all the way around the sky. So there's a lot more to the survey. It's just, this is just a piece, but it helps you see the structures, otherwise it's difficult to show. And so what do we see? Um, uh, this is revealing nicely 
the famous web-like structure. So you can see chains of galaxies, uh, voids of galaxies, the labyrinth, the web of galaxies. A very important question is how does that come to be? Uh, I think we know how it's going to be. It actually will link, ultimately, back to my discussion um, at the end of the talk on the acoustic waves, the sound waves in the young universe. They were busy crafting this structure. Um, could I ask, is it work of Mary Beth, you probably did this. Thanks, thanks, I actually. At least that's you. So. <laughs> um, a couple of other points I'd like to make. I know this diagram looks as though the density of galaxies gets lower as we go far away. That's an artifact. It is difficult to see galaxies 1.3 billion light years away, so you don't see as many. And you correct for that. What you discover is that, in fact, a little box about this big, a cube this big, is statistically no different than the same size cube anywhere. You plonk down a cube 200 million light years, as a cube, and you will get statistically the same pattern as in it. In other words, there is a maximum to the onset of structure a couple of hundred million light years. And beyond that, the universe is smooth and homogeneous. It's very difficult to sense that because we are so parochial. We see things on such small scales. Here I try to brag that this is 1.3 billion light years across. Now imagine you were 20 billion light years in size. All of this pattern of galaxies becomes just a uniform mist, not unlike you walking through a cloud. And you could keep walking and walking, it wouldn't matter in which direction you looked up, down, around and around, it would be just an endless mist of galaxies. That is the character of the universe, as geometry, geometry is the wrong term, but it's topography. Like it's uniform on very large scale. We've only just been able to demonstrate that with observations. It's been assumed, actually, uh, just for simplicity's sake, for most of the last century. Next question we want to have of this pattern, just the same question as for an individual galaxy. Do they move? Are they moving? Is there, for example, rotation? And if so, about what center? Uh, please discard that thought, the answer is no. But anyway, so is there motion? And the answer is absolutely, it's very famous, of course, it's the expansion motion, so let me now re-plot that diagram, there it all is, exactly as before, this time, using Doppler shifts, the velocities of the galaxies are shown using red arrows, vectors, the vector diagram, short vectors mean slow speed, long vector means fast, and I've only shown the representative ones, every single galaxy on this diagram obeys these red vectors and the pattern that you see. It's a very, very interesting pattern. And when you first see it, a couple of things strike you. One is, everything's going away from us. It really does seem as though everything's going away from us. Look a little more carefully, and it's quite interesting. The galaxies that are very close to us don't move away very fast. The galaxies that are further are moving much faster. And in proportion to distance, double the distance, double the speed. This is the famous Hubble law. The proportionality of distance and recession speed. Now, before you, one becomes, uh, you know, one concludes that in fact, uh, incidentally, of course, this, this expansion is, oh, I'm jumping ahead of myself slightly. Before we conclude that it's all going away from us, let's ask a simple question, a question one should always ask in any, any context. What is, the, what is the experience of someone else? Not my experience, what is someone else? What is some other galaxy witness of this velocity field? If we jump to this galaxy here, what does it witness? If it had a sentient civilization measuring velocities of galaxies, what would it see? This is actually a lovely example of a quick, Vector edition 